You see, God is working here. God is working here. It may not look apparent to you. It's intentional about what he's doing. It's very intentional about what he's doing here. Very intentional. And you know, that job he's doing is not a job just to give you cash in your hand. It's beyond cash. Yes, it's beyond cash. It's beyond cash is the lowest level of what he's doing here. Yes, cash is the lowest. It's the very, it's the least of what he's doing here. One night, what I sense he's doing also is the fact that he's changing our appetites. Yeah, changing our appetites. He's changing the appetite to the end that you will, the way, your, your, what you will start desiring, I think are not even natural to you. You will be shocked at your desires. Yes, you'll be shocked at it. You feel like, why am I desiring this? God is working in you. Because, because that part of you has to change for him to bring out his reality out of you. Yes, that, he, that's what, something has to change. And so he's changing, he's changing. That's what he's doing. So you see, as you, as you feed your baby, you don't see changes immediately. We wait for three months. Constantly feeding that child. Four months after, five months after, the child is changing. But it doesn't show immediately. Don't be discouraged that we are not seeing stuff. No, 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 no. Stuff are happening already. Yes, they are. They are. Yes, 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 yes. They're happening. They're happening. And it will show forth in days to come that the works that God has begun, it will complete it. It will complete it. It will complete it. It will complete it. The times you have spent, you have spent interacting with God, it's not a waste. He's telling, he says it's not a waste. It will produce. And the result is not cash. It will produce. It will produce. Thank you for the, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Thank you so much. It will. It will produce. It will. Moli vrekati shobar do mokotos seper de megati vrekatiška. It will produce. It will. It will produce. You need to know that it will produce. You have not wasted your time over this period. You have not, because you seem to have exchanged time for certain things. But it looks like where, where, where is it? where is it? It's, you, you didn't waste your time. Mm. You didn't waste your time. It will produce. It will. I hope when he, when he produces, I hope you know that it has produced. Because you are not looking at the wrong things. I hope you will be able to see that. This is it. This is it. You will be able to see it. That you will not process things from your carnal point of view and say, we get better to win. No, you didn't get better to win. You get better to something that was strong. But just because you do not know it. You will. You will. You will. It will. It will. It will. It will. Can we pray in tongues for the next two, three minutes? Let's pray in tongues for the next two, three minutes. Can we pray in tongues for the next two, three minutes? Mo feri asu ka ni tele ko sa pa ila fina han so po ta. Ina mina skofa le han na boko tos. Medi eka da fina mo ko soma le beka tos. Oh, sa peru na suga la de meka ta mo boko so mo boko tos. Woo! Matita fella verde mo boko tos. It won't stop. 
say his eternal hands are what is doing this work. His own eternal hands. Our part is just to, but just participate us in this work he's doing. He's the one doing the work. But just participate us in this work. Our contribution many times is just our time. That's our contribution. So I'll go into my message. So this is, this is the trouble of pastors. <laughs> time. <laughs> Glory. Yeah. So, you see, God also has burdens. God has burdens. God has burdens. You know, just when you, wake, you, you go back at, to, at night to sleep and you feel like, hey, this has not been done. You know, God also goes back and says, hey, this has not been done. That this burden has not been lifted up. This need that has not been met. Not because, I mean, it's because the work he's doing is such that he needs you to participate in that work. But you're not there. You don't show up. And so he goes back at night also and feels like... And so you're thinking, God, but it's happening in scriptures. Ezekiel 22, 30, I sought for a man. I sought for a man. I sought for a man. But he couldn't find, and so he, he, he did not find. So it means that God looked over the, the whole of Jerusalem. And he found nobody. So it's possible for God to look over Lagos. And you, you, do you know what, what I mean? He, he, he looked for the whole of Jerusalem. He found, he said, I found nobody. And so his wrath came up, up, up upon them. He found nobody. I'm sure his mind boggled to find that God can look over a city. And God will go back to bed at night and feel like, I didn't achieve my goals today. It didn't happen today. Maybe tomorrow it will happen. It's not just you who feels like I didn't achieve it today. Even God does. He does that. He does. He does. You see, when he was going to choose David, he didn't just, it wasn't a random selection. He had checked through the other ones. He checked, he checked them out. Because when he, he, told, he, told, he told Samuel, he said, I, I have rejected him. It means that he was on the list before. I checked him out. If he rejected him, it means that that person was on the list before. So it means that God is scrutinizing. We many times, yeah, I know there's a 9,000 that's not bad that needs to bow. Sometimes there's nobody on the radar. But those people, those people are sometimes, they are, they are here. The burdens of God. So God is looking for people to, he has a need, he wants somebody to intercede for Nije. And God can search through Lagos and find not one person available because everybody's running the rat race. And so God goes back at, at night and says, hey, it didn't happen today, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week it will happen. Maybe it will happen, maybe it will happen. And so David was selected to bear the burdens of God. Where is why your own needs in all of this? You have your needs, and God meets your needs out of His mercies. He still meets your needs where His own needs have not been met. He still meets your needs. That shows the fatherhood of God. That you will come and cry, Lord, I need this, I need that, and He does it for you. But He's looking at you. What will you do for me in return? Not because He it, 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 it doesn't place what He did for you based on what He has done for you. He just wants something from you also that you alone can do. In a sense. And so he does good to us. He does all of that to us. But he has his needs. And so when we sing, What can I do for you, my God? It, stops being a, it should stop being a song. It should be something that we ask. What is it? What, 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 is the, what are the burdens of your heart? What are the things that are your own heart that I can do right now? Because he has a lot. He has a lot on his mind. He has a lot. This brings us to the point to say, like Pastor was saying last week, that the life of a man does not consist in the abundance of the things that he has. It doesn't consist in what he has. What the enemy has done to us is to keep us in a point where we are chasing those things. We are chasing those things. Our Lord is supplying it out of his mercy because he has to. But then, people are vacant in his own vineyard. I know, I mean, I mean, you come to church. I know you're in church today. You're ushering today. How come? Maybe probably the next time he would see you in the vineyard working, quote and unquote, is next Sunday again. Why? Why do you take off? Seven days off. Why? Why can God not look up to you and, say, and call you up on Wednesday and say, hey, I want to get this done and it reaches out to you? Why? I know you're an usher. Why? 
I'm saying that your life does not consist in the abundance of things that you possess. The way God has routed things is such that the only thing that will give fulfillment is when you are tied up to carrying his own burdens. The only things that would satisfy you deep within is your alignment to helping him carry his burdens. That's what you were made to carry his burdens, actually. To the end that if you're not carrying his burdens, you will chase stuffs and never come to fulfillment. And you always need stuff to complete yourself. And so you will make your first 10 million. There's an high with that, but it, it dies after two, three days. Then you make your first 20 million and it dies. And you are, you are, you are going for the next one, for the next one. Before you know what's happening, you are 80 years old. The Lord just packages you. Come to, just come home. Come to heaven. The ROI on you was negative. Yeah, negative. Negative. I just, I invested so much in, of my mercy in him, but no returns. Come to heaven. Just come. Come to heaven. Come to heaven, but no returns. No returns. And that tendency lies in every one of us here. If we do not align with him. So when I said that the work God is doing is not just giving you cash, is that it's cutting away dross, cutting away excess fat, where there's excess fat, so that you are lean to carry his burdens. And there's a lot of that burden. Some of you had these burdens when you were in school. You had them. You were passionate about certain things. There, 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 was, there, were, there, were, there were things you were praying about that you, you took it as your duty to pray about this matter. You took it as a call. You took it as your duty. But you know, you finish school and legitimate needs of life happen to you. And so you don't show up in Zion anymore to prosecute the will of God for you. And so you are, you are in GT Bank. You are prospering, we know, but that's not, your life doesn't consist in that. You are prospering. You, are, you came to give testimony. God has done it. We agree. What have you done? You've left that place. The, bird, you don't, the bodies are not there anymore. When God is looking over Lagos, he doesn't even look at your side too much. He does because he knows this one. This one is engaged with GT Bank. He's a GT Bank staff. He's engaged with GT Bank. He would rather go somewhere else. God is even now avoiding you. In a way, in a sense, when it comes to work, because you're not a serving son. You are a son, but not a serving son anymore. You were serving before. You stopped serving. The bodies are not there anymore. The things that used to tickle your heart, they don't anymore. They don't. They just... It's not random. It's just one of those things now. Before you could spend three hours to intercede about nations that you've not been to before. <laughs> but that's if that, if that feels strange to you right now, then it's you I'm talking to. You could go to sports complex to pray about things that were not even pertaining to you at all. Right now, you're even hardly praying for yourself. <laughs> And so God is saying, I have burdens. You know, he does, and he does. So the end that possessions are not, it's not the problem, like Pastor said last week. It's not. It's not. It's a means to an end. It's not an end in itself. We don't, it's not, a, it's not, it's not an end in itself. It's not an end in itself. Let's go to Luke. Luke, Luke 12, 15, 21. Let's just look at that. Let's just look at that and we'll fly from there. And he said, Take it unto them. And he said unto them, Take it and be of covetousness for a man's life, considering the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Let's go to the next. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The grand of a certain rich man brought forth plenty. Go, go ahead. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my bands and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy knees. Hey, don't, don't be in a hurry. Go back. Take thy knees. Eat. Drink. And be merry. This is the problem here. They take thy knees. Eat, drink, and be merry. Not the pulling down of the bands. The bands are not the problem. Because God even wants you to store what you have. It's not the problem. The problem here is the take that he's hit. It means this man reduced his existence to making money, eating, and drinking. 
chop life. And there's no, there's no worth to giving you life and breath. If it's all you will do with your life. Don't be too fast. Some of you are in that state right now. All you are fighting for is drink, eat, and be merry. That's all that is engaging your hearts. And that you have not gotten a breakthrough yet is the mercy of God. Kaya. That the breakthrough has not come yet. Is God having mercy on you? So that you don't cut your life short by yourself. That's the problem. That you will stay and have no and have no burdens of God that you are carrying. You are calling for death. That you would stay and there will be no burdens of God. There's nothing of God that is moving you. That's the problem. That all you want to do is to blow. That's the problem. The blowing is the problem. Is the fact that all you want to do is to blow. That's the problem. That all you did in 100 days of fasting and prayer was, Lord, let me blow. And God is saying, you will not blow because I love you. I'm telling you. You will not blow because I love you until you make this heart shift. Until this thing leaves your heart. Until this thing of eat, marry, and drink leaves your heart. You will not blow. And it will be the mercy of God towards you. You will not blow. Because your life does not consist in this. Your life does not consist in this. I'll, I'll, give, I'll run a case study right now. Um, so you see in Luke 2, 25 to I think um, 38, you see Simeon and Anna, two guys, two people in scriptures, talked about them briefly and they just went off. Let's go there. Look. And behold, there was a certain man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. Go ahead. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. It was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death. So this man cannot even die, even if he wants to die. Long life was imposed on him. He was, he was imposed. I will show you the, I will show you. Go ahead. 27. And he came by the spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law, then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace. It means that I wanted to go. You don't know. You are, you are, try, you are, you are, you are in faith trying to stay alive. This person wants to die. Long life is chasing this one. You know why? He was prosecuting a burden of God on the earth. And so God kept him here. So the hand that the effectiveness of your faith will sometimes be highly correlated to how much of the burdens of God you are carrying. That you are not, that, that you're not in rest yet on certain matters because it's not tied to the burdens of God. That's why you're still struggling. Hey, I know it's good. There's a fight of faith. But if everything you are doing is fight of faith, there's a problem also. Maybe you are not aligned with the burdens of God. Because this guy wanted to go. So you know, you know, what, you know, what, you know what it means for Simeon? It means Simeon. If there's COVID in town, Simeon will not die. If there's, if there's COVID, because the Holy Ghost had told him, you will not die until you see. Because this guy, what he was doing there was, he was praying for Christ to show up. He was using his life to pray for Christ to show up on the earth. And God needed that, that he needed that infrastructure on the earth for Christ to come. And so, maybe God had looked over and found that there are not many people that can do this guy. You know, they do, you know, they go anywhere. You will be here. You will be here. And so, sound health and long life was impacted to him. So, no matter how the plane is turbulent, Simeon will not die. Simeon becomes an insurance on the, on the, on the, on the flights. Whoa. It becomes an, ins an insurance there. Because he will not die. He will not die. He doesn't... Shabby, hey God. Shabby will say that uh, your heart must agree. Your, so this one heart must agree. You wanted to die. God by himself. He was the one keeping him. I'm saying that your faith, eh? where there's too much struggle, pause and wait. Why is there too much struggle here? Is there, is there a disalignment between what I'm doing and what God wants? This guy was not struggling with faith. Let's go ahead. I will run. I'll go, go ahead. For my eyes have seen thy salvation. 
which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of, the, of thy people, of thy people Israel. Go ahead. And just about his mother might be that these things which were spoken of him. So he was, just, he was speaking certain things about Christ. Go ahead. And Simeon blessed them. Go, go, go back. And Simeon blessed them and said, May his, Mary to his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising against of, again of many in Israel. And for a sign which shall be spoken against. To the next. Second person. Yeah, go to move 36. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asa. She was of great age and had lived with, with an husband seven years from her virginity. Go ahead. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers at night and day. Hold on there. Two guys, two people here, they seem to be doing the same thing. Basically like interceding for the coming of Christ because she recognized when Christ came in. Without any introduction, she knew that this is the Christ. Because there's a recognition system of what you are praying about. When it shows up, you just know that, ah, kini in the lay, kini in the lay. But you see these two guys, and this brings us about, the, I'm talking about the burden right now. It brings us to two, two, two sets of people who pursue that burden. Some, like Anna, will be in the temple 24-7. The other ones, like Simeon, will be going and, in and out of the temple. But they are both prosecuting the counsel of God, praying for the coming of Christ. And so, what that means is this. Is that the guy going to GT Bank tomorrow can be prosecuting the counsel of God at the level of an Anna who is in the temple 24-7. They can prosecute the counsel of God almost at the, at the same level. So, you don't have to go and resign your job to say you want to carry the burdens of God. Simeon didn't need to. Anna was in the temple 24-7. To the end that I don't need to compare myself with Apostle Harome. That is he's doing what he's doing. I will go to Binance tomorrow and do what I need to do. But I can still carry the counsel of God on my heart. And be prosecuting at that level. I am saying that many times we have been told that your job, your calling is in your bank. That one are your business. This one here. This one here. A banker can do this successfully. The bank is not what is keeping his life. It is this one that is doing that is keeping his life. I don't know if you get what, I, what I'm saying. I'm saying that the interaction that was keeping Simeon wasn't his job at GT Bank or any other place. It was the fact that he was prosecuting a bigger counsel of God beyond him. So that we don't feel disadvantaged or feel like, ah, maybe I'm not like, no, 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 no. You can at the level that you are right now. You can. You can. You can. It is Simeon and Hannah's story. It, you can. You can prosecute from where thou art. You can prosecute from where thou art. You can. You really can. But you also think about Anna. Who was sponsoring Anna? Who? She, she never left the temple. <laughs> it's actually not come down. <laughs> Who was sponsoring Anna? Let's, she was a widow for school. With, but the, she departed not from the temple. She was a temple. She day side church. Who was sponsoring her? Who was feeding her? It's me and you. And so we become a, this is part of the body you can carry. Where you are sponsoring those who are here full time. To the end, that when I, I'm, as, as I'm giving Anna, I'm a participator with Anna in what Anna is doing. I'm a participator. I'm a participator. Anna, I just sent Anna 15k this week. I sent Anna 30k this week. So Anna is not. There's no disadvantage in the system. I go into GT Bank. I'm fine. Anna is fine, and the system of God's work is being done. You see the need. You see that. You see why. You see why we need cash. It's not to drive Lamborghini. It's this, this, this. And you cannot do this. You cannot do this. At your time, we don't let you do this. The people who are doing it, your own job. See, see the way God this system starts that there will be no imbalance. And so your prosperity is not your prosperity. It's, it's our prosperity. Your blowing is not your blowing. It is our blowing. It is for the body. God helps you that you reach the body's own. You will purge. I'm telling you. God helps you that you reach the body's own. Wow. Because there's an allocation of the body routed through, through you. Yeah. God helps you. God helps you. God helps you. Yeah. To the end that if Hannah is prosecuting the will of God for her life in the temple and there's pain in her heart because of hunger and the money has been routed to you, you quit an extra burden in the heart of God. This is, this is so... You are giving to Hannah right now, not because you want to prosper. You are doing your work. Yes. It's your job you are doing. Yes. And so, 
Nobody needs to come and tell you, do this, do that. You are doing your job in the system. It's your job you are doing. It's your job you are doing. Anna must not cry in the temple. Anna must not be in need. Anna, no. Because she's a widow. She must not cry. I cry to God. Catch you and like, what kind of a child are you? Because the last two you went for summer, not because summer is bad, but that money was not for summer. It was for Hannah. So, so you, so sometimes you have to, you know, we are still words of cash. Um, you know, we are still words. It's you are a conduit, right? So sometimes funds will come to your hand. You will think about it before you spend. You think about it. God, what is, what is this money for? Your salary. And sometimes you think about it. What is this one for? Where is this one going? Where is this one going to? Who should? You know the most. You know the best part of my month is the first of the month. Phones go to first because this is a channel. This is a channel. This is not the stopping point. It's, 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 a, it's, a, cha- it's a channel. And you know the interesting thing? You, we, you, can, you won't look at Anna and say, Anna, she's very lazy. She's not, she's not forward thinking. Are you, are you okay? <laughs> but Anna, we also, not, we also not look at Simeon and say, Simeon, you're not spiritual. Yes. Anna, Simeon will not, Anna will not look at Simeon and say, you cannot pray 15 hours. No, I'm in GT Bank. Working the money that you, that you you get what I mean? So there is no there's no comparison here for those who compare themselves. I'm gonna say they are not wise. Do your own, I do your own. The system is fine. And so this saves you from the pressure of hey, hey, 22 hours. My guy, I will not leave me for now. Right? I will not. Because why you have the time to do this at 8 a.m. on Monday morning. I'm tidying up reports. But before I did that report, I had done certain things that almost equate what you will do for the next 15 hours that day. So there's ba- just do your, let me do me. It saves you from that pressure. So you don't have to resign. Just keep doing what you're doing, but tie something behind it. Yeah. And so you would say, let me go back to Simeon. So our faith application is such that it's effective to the degree. I mean, some of the things that you are, that you are praying to God for, even if they are not tied, one-to-one to the burdens of God. He will give them to you. He loves you. He's a good father. He will. He will. He will give them to you. He promised you certain things. But you know, in breaking through some other things, you must align with that will. Must. There's no, you must. While I was praying about this, it dropped in my heart to say this. For example, if, if perhaps there's someone in here watching online you've gotten a diagnosis from the doctor that portends death in clear terms I'm telling you you will not die but it's on this condition go back and prosecute God's counsel go back and prosecute his will go back and prosecute his burdens your life your being alive here is tied to prosecute that burdens like Simeon you will not die it doesn't matter what diagnosis you have gotten. Hear me very well. Go back. You, as you engage that, as you engage in particularly God's counsel, your health will start getting better. Just hear the Lord. And so the problem here, many times, right? Um, and so, in getting stuff from God, I will, I will get your hypnosis. I will. I will preach your hypnosis. I will. I think I'm talking hypnosis already, right? I'll talk about it more shortly. And so the problem many times is the fact that why people are, why people are not able to break into this, seeing these things, seeing things as God will see them, is high doors in the hearts. It just clogs. It just clogs everywhere where you're not seeing clearly. All that is moving through your heart is blow, 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 blow. I don't know your heart is how you will do this, how you will do that. And so it even affects, it affects the effectiveness of your faith. And so when you even approach scriptures, 
when you're approaching God, because those idols are there, you're not seeing clearly. You came to God, who is God you came to, but because you came in with an embargo, you cannot even see clearly. And God is saying certain things to you, you're not seeing clearly, you are not seeing, not because God is not speaking, but because your heart is not. There's, 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 there's a clog somewhere. Let's look at Ezekiel, Ezekiel 14. Let's look at Ezekiel 14. Ah, I have time, I'm running off. Ezekiel 14, from verse 1. So, uh, now I'm talking about faith now. And bringing out those realities of God that are both, you know, that pertains to life and godliness. Ezekiel 14. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up the idols in their hearts. You know, see, these idols are in a place where, 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 we can, where we cannot see them. It's not, it's not, it's not, we can't see them. So, they came to church with their fine suit and everything. They didn't come with shopmono in their hand. But it's left their hand, it's gone to their hearts. Where is worse? If we could see, if we could see it on their hands, we could have said, hey, drop it, this is church you're coming to. But it's now in their hearts. And put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. So there was something covering their face. Right? They were coming to me. Something in their heart, something in their face. Should I be inquired of or, at all by them? Go ahead, next verse. Therefore, speak unto them and say unto, say, say, say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, every man of the household of Israel that set up that set up his idols in his heart, and put the stumbling block of the iniquity before his face, and cometh to meet the prophets. Come, come to the prophets. How the Lord will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. So you will be, you'll be hearing things. You'll be seeing things. So you come to scriptures with an idol. You will be seeing things, but it just may not be scripture that you are seeing. Yeah, you'll be seeing things, but it's not Christ you are seeing. So you go want to you will be you will be seeing things, but it's not Christ. It's not Christ. It's not Christ. So let's 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 do a run a case study, a second case study with a young ruler. Pastor talked about that guy last week. Let's talk about let's look at that guy. Um in um Mark, Mark 10, Mark 10, Mark 10, Mark 10, Mark 10. I'll round off here and I'll, I'll dash, dash you through some time. I promise. Mark 10. And he arose from thence. Mark 10 from verse what is this? Uh, from verse 17. Verse 17, verse 17. So I'm, I'm getting into epignosis now. How the hearts, the eyes, if something is there, you will not see. No matter, you, do not, you will not see very well. And so when he was gone forth into the, into the way, this one is not working. There came one running and knelt and kneeled. Pastor, I want to add drama. That's why I'm coming down. I will go back up again. And so there came one. He knelt before him and said, good. This was like worship. He came to worship. He, was, he first worshipped. He was crying with mucus coming out of his nose. Tears. He was crying. Good. Good one. Right? Good master. There was worship here. There, there, there was adoration here. There was... There, 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 you would, see, you would see that ah, this guy, this guy, deep guy, deep guy. But the, but there was a problem. Deep guy, deep guy. Good master. What shall I do? And he even came with a good prayer point. That I mean, you know, it's another life. Ah, uh, uh, look at his, look at his desires now. You came to ask for summer tickets. He came to ask for eternal life, and he even started with our protocols. Our protocol is that we will get to Thanksgiving. Uh, we do, he did all of, he met all the requirements that we have told him. And so if this guy was in our church, we would have said, this guy is deeply spiritual. Yeah. But I said, this guy, ha. Ah. You know, he didn't see tears. He <laughs> didn't see him raising his hands. He didn't see him crying. But you know, because Jesus is a doctor, precise doctor, who is able to cut. He was able, he's able to cut. He's able to cut through to see what is actually inside there. To the end that where you and I would not see, he's able to cut in there and see that something is wrong here. And so he's a good master outside to inherit eternal life. Next verse, please. Next verse, next verse, next verse. Uh, and Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? Did you they worship the God they ask, why did they worship me? Wait till they happen. Wait till. Because they have seen, because the communication happening outside of here. Is at a deeper level than what's happening. <laughs> you are here. Jesus, Jesus is looking at you like who they talk. The last, this you, you that woke up to pray last night and you clearly told us no, you're, you're, because you wanted to watch Wura. I'm not judging you. 
I'm saying that it's, this is at a different level. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Thou knowest the commandment. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not be a false witness. Defraud not. Honor the father and the mother. Look at the next verse. Let's stay here for a while. I answered and said unto him, Master, hold this I have observed from my youth. Hold on, hold on. A man without eternal life. Go back to the things that he said he has not done. A rich man, I have a message for you. Go back to the previous verse. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. A rich man without eternal life. He has not committed adultery. I, I want to calm down. He, he has not committed adultery. A rich man without eternal life. And you now small cash is entering your hand. They're not the year for us again. There's problem everywhere because smoke, smoke, this is a rich man. No woman problem in his life. You don't know that wealth, you know, you know wealth as, as is, is a double-edged sword. Do you know? Do you know? Wait, do wait, do you know? You don't say, some things are similar to say in PG, but we have international guests. You know, I'm saying that the skill required to manage abundance is 10 times more than the skill you need to manage poverty. I'm telling you. The skill, you need to manage abundance. You need 10 times more than you need to manage when you don't have anything. You know what? Because money, to pump you up, so all your, all your arrogance will show, all your pride will show, all your lack of dependence on God will show because you can fix everything with money. So you just to drop cash here. You just to drop cash here. So what you should pray about, cash will do it. Yes. And cash will actually do because Abraham, without God, produced Ishmael. And so your cash will be producing Ishmael for you. Ishmael. You are just giving birth to Ishmael. Everywhere. Ishmael. Ishmael. Ishmael everywhere. You, you will take everywhere around you. No, no Isaac. All is Ishmael. But there's, there's now trouble all around you. And so, that God has not given some people cash. High is the love of God working. Because the skill... To manage cash, you don't have it yet. And so, so God will hold it first until this heart is changed. Look at the things the guy said he has not done. He has not killed. He has not stolen. He has not born first with false witness. He has not defrauded. What? A businessman, a rich man. No defraud, no fraud. No fraud. And you know, to, to show that he's correct, Joseph did not tell him, no, you know, you're lying. He didn't tell him that. He agreed that, yes, I agree. Because he checked. He would check his friend. Ah, this guy is saying the truth. No fraud. No fraud. No fraud. You know, there's a... I don't know, I don't know what's telling me this. But there's a state that... Um, one, one, one of the states in Nigeria, the government wanted to run some programs, some projects. He said, let him just give it to pastors to manage the funds inside there. He? <laughs> Are their projects finished, oh, bro? <laughs> because the man thought... He, he gave it to pastors to run that, okay... This is this are men of God. This project would <laughs> finished. No fraud. A man without eternal life. A man without eternal life. No fraud inside. But he had a bigger problem than fraud, than adultery, than killing, than not stealing. Let's go. I had. I said unto him, Master, all this I have done, observed since my youth. Go ahead. Then just beholding him, loved him. Just like, was, ah, correct guy. Correct guy. But you know, because he's a precise doctor, that he doesn't, sh that some certain symptoms doesn't show to the face. He's able to see internally and see that, but there's still a problem here. He's a precise, not when I told you about precision, that's what he's doing. Sometimes you think you are fine. Because you don't know that there's something inside here. Until the Lord expose it to you one day while you are studying. You know, ah! As I have this proclivity, you do. You do. This is why we go to check up every morning to read our Bible. It's check up we are going for. It's check up. So they will do diagnosis. They will not, ah! This is deep vein thrombosis. Shall I try, doctor? <laughs> Correct guy. <laughs> right? One thing thou lackest. Go thy way. Sell whatsoever thou hast. And give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasures in heaven. Wait. 
Where a man's treasure is, that's where his heart will be. So all this guy had was on this side of eternity. All! If in this world, only we have hope. So this guy was, mis he was miserable. Now, there was a need in his life. He knew. He had seen it all. Done it all. But some, like Pastor said, something, like, I need something extra. I need something extra. And so he came for that extra. He did not meet Peter. He met Jesus himself. Jesus himself is, is who he met. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up thy cross and follow me. You know what, why you told him to, 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 take, to take the cross? Because the, because the cross is a symbol of Christianity. You know what that means? It means that, like Pastor said last week, that cross, eh, is that that's what, that's what embodies, that's what, that's what speaks to our Christian faith. Cross. Not Lamborghini. Not PJ, private jet. Yeah? What are those things you will get if you need them? If you don't need them, you will not get them. You get what I mean? Faith, 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 faith. But if you don't need it, eh, at a certain level, God, the Lord, in his love, you will not get it. And I don't want to get what God, what I don't need. Because if you have what you don't need, it will kill you. I'm telling you. You know I can talk like this. I've been on the lower end of life before. So, I, I'm not against money. I, I see, I know it means to be broke. I've... You say when you finish bathing? Yes. So I'm not saying I'm not I'm not a I'm not a poverty minister, right? <laughs> I'm not a minister, a minister of poverty. I know what it means. I also, so I also know what it means for God to lift you up. I know. But I've also seen that in that value chain. Eh? There's a lot that happens in that value chain between here and there. <laughs> There's a lot that I need more skill now than, than here. You know why? I have cash right now. I cannot stay my wife one day. Come on, what are you talking, talking about? I'm living, I'm living. You know why you can say you can live? Because you are fine. You, can, you, you have money to go and to live. Yeah. I'm living. You are gutting me hungry. I'm living. You know, the woman too, she now has money. So she's like, well, if you don't want to, she, I'll live too. You know what? There's money. It's, money, is the, there's, money is the problem. And so there was a certain man that said, the children of the man said, that money was a cost to our family. Money. He said money was a cost to this family. Because he saw how things happened. Guy, they will. Take your cross and follow me. Let's go to the next verse. And he was sad at that saying and went away grieved. For he had wits. The, the guy that came to cry in worship, his hands were raised. Mucus everywhere. With the attention of Jesus. He left. He left. You got just attention. You got attention of God. God paused every activity to give you an attention. God paused eternity and waited for you to give you attention. And he gave you, a, 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 he, gave, he, he told you what to do to get what you came for. Except that what you have is your problem. That you have it. Is the problem, and so when he saw what the guy wanted, when the guy put it, when the guy put it by side by side, what what he had, he said, "What I have is more than what I want." So you put eternal life here for this guy. The, the guy chose cash over eternal life. So you put Zoe here. You put Zoe here. The guy looked at Zoe, ah, painfully. I love my money, Zoe did. He left sad, and so this guy even left your service. With remorse in his face, but the high door was sitting in his heart. So he left your church. He left church. So you and I will look at it you, because you don't know what's happening in, in the heart as things are happening in church. Ah, you see this guy. He was just crying. He even left with sadness, godly sorrow. Now lie. Idol is an idolater. He's an idolater. He's an idolater who is living because while worship was going on, God was telling him, You are selling all that you have. He was still worshiping. At the point, he couldn't take it anymore. He stopped worshiping. He said, Lord, what do you mean? I said, you will sell everything. Because, not because having is the problem for him. It was a problem for him. That's what is not to everybody here. Right? To go and sell your stuffs. 
But if, if because this guy's problem was this, that was what was given to him as the cure for him for his home. To the end, that this guy, because of the idol in his heart, he could not receive eternal life. He could not see clearly. Is he care for sin? He could not. He could not apprehend what was being said. He could not. The question is this. In what area have you interacted with Jesus Christ to the point where even God is telling Michael, ah, this subject, let's not talk to him about it. This guy, he will not hear us. This subject matter. This guy will not hear us. He won't. God is, not, God is even scared to talk to you about a subject because he knows you will not hear him. God is now telling Gabriel, Gabriel, just play piano for me. This guy will not hear us. Gabriel, play piano. This guy will not hear us. He won't hear us. There should be nothing in your life that God cannot speak to you on. There should be no subject that God is worried to talk to you about. There should be nothing that God is going to tell you to drop. Nothing. There should be nothing that God should be scared to tell you to change. That even your own Lord is not afraid, afraid of you. Ah, say this, ah, no, this girl, leave her more. The, she wants to marry this kind of boy. Ah, God will not tell Gabriel, Gabriel, let's go, let's go, let's go. We cannot. This, she, she must marry that boy. She must. Because the boy became an idol in her heart. And you will not, she, she no matter what I tell her. He has seen the on private jet. All in his heart is out of fly on private jets. So the motivation for the entry ministry is private jets. And I'm talking to him. And so when that guy comes to scripture, all he's seen in scripture is how to blow. How to be on PJ. That is not what scriptures is for. It's to see Christ. But because of the idol in his heart, he cannot see anymore. He's reading his Bible, but he's not seeing currently because idols are there. This guy is studious in his Bible. But there's idol in the heart there. There's something there inside his heart. There's a problem inside there. Sadly, we can hardly diagnose that from our eyes. Only God can diagnose that. And God has spoken to this guy about it. But he will not let it go. This ministry, we will do it. PJ, we will enter. I don't care how. And so when he reads scripture, all he's seeing in scripture, all he's telling him is how to get that done. But that's not Christ talking to him. That's the idol talking to him. The idol is talking to him. Tobe, Tobe, get, let me get, get, come, 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 Tobe, come. I'm running off. So, look at Tobe's shades. Tobe has got all these lights. You only know his wife now because you've been in this church. If somebody has wears this glass here right now, you would think this glass is the color of his glasses because of what he's wearing. And so, that you think it's green doesn't mean it's green. This is what the high doors will do. This is the high door right now. So you are seeing the word, the word is there. You think the word is speaking to you, but your glass is what is speaking to you. It that's, what it's speak, that's what it's speaking to you. That's what it's speaking to you. It's the glass, it's, it's what you are wearing. You are not hearing well until you take away these glasses before you will see that it's actually white. So it's not scripture speaking to you. This, this, this is what I'm speaking to you. Because that, this, this is what changed the color of what you're looking at. Yeah. So, we don't go to scriptures with our biases. You don't go there with your biases. When you get to scriptures, your agenda, you drop it down. You pull your shoes down. You pull your shoes, you pull your agenda down. You pull what you think down. And let scripture talk to you. Let scripture speak to you by itself. Only scriptures. You take away your glasses. You don't even keep it. You break it and you throw it away. So when you come back again tomorrow, you are, you are without glasses, without your idols. So you can see correctly. This is the problem. Thank you, bro. This is the problem where many people are seeing through those, those glasses. They, see me, they have a, a form of faith, seemingly. And so because those things are not now met at a certain level, they make a shipwreck of their faith. They now say, God promised me this. He did not do it. But the question is, God is asking, when did I tell you that? When did I promise you that? Your idols spoke to you. Your idols should do it for you. I did not tell you that. So people are carrying pains today in the Christian foe, in the Christian faith. They are carrying pains in their heart today. But they are disappointed in God for certain things that God had nothing to do with. That God spoke to them nothing about. God promised them nothing about it. But because they saw through their idols, they held it on. And they were expecting results. Only that idols are impotent. They can't produce that humility that you're looking for. And even if they do, 
They will eat each smell all around you. And so people are offended. People are angry. I read my Bible. I, this is, is scriptures. Except that it wasn't God that was speaking to you. He said that it was Hydra speaking to you. And so you want to look into your heart. What areas do you have today that God is worried for about in your life? But your Lord and Savior is worried about. He's looking at you and I'm like, ha, ah, there should be none. Oh, I mean, some things can be painful when God says it. Don't get me wrong. But you know how we do those pains? We take in prayer. We take in prayer and pray them like Jesus when he was in Gethsemane. Where you are there, this thing is painful. God, this you're asking me to do is painful. This you're asking me to leave is painful. How be it? Not my will, your will be done. And you will pray that the angels come to me, start to you until the point where you say that, bring the cross now, I will take it. You'll be in prayer on those issues, on those your idols. You'll be in prayer sitting down there with your idols and your God. One God has to leave because you can't have two gods in that prayer room. And so you will sit down there until the idols in your heart are totally dead. To the point where even the cross then start looking attractive to you and say, okay, bring it on now. I can take the cross now. I, even when they will come to, to defend you from the cross, you tell them, no, don't defend me. Give me this cross. I'm going with this cross. You have to get to that point. Where you are cutting off stuff from your life, it's a, it's a bleeding place. Because the surgical table is a bloody place. There's no bloodless surgical place, Dr. G, right? As long as you are cutting something, there will be blood. There will be pains. There will be pains. There will be pains. I fear for myself what God will tell me to do after now. I fear for myself too. But not to worry. I'll be fine. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. My point is this, is that you have to go back to God. You know, you don't even know the areas in your life right now where you know that God cannot talk to you about because your mind is made up. You can't do that one here. We don't have that time. Get home. Sit with God. Let's do this in one and for all. You want me to break up? I break up today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want me to do this? Today I'll do it. But don't be in a hurry to do Don't be in a hurry until you, until you have strength to do it. Supplied in prayer. If not, you will come out. When you see the cross, you will run back. And you may never come back to that cross anymore. I'm telling you honest truth. Because when they stripe you, when you feel this, because... It, it's, God, does not, God has not promised you that when you leave it, things will be fine. Because that ruler, that young ruler, he was going to suffer for it. You know what it means? To wake up every morning with your robe on, breakfast is ready, lunch is ready, and all of a sudden, there's, that, that is not existing anymore compared to it. You, you, you get what I mean? You will feel pain. You will feel pain, but you will come out whole. You will come out whole because that's what matters the most. That's what matters the most. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Kavi skalo pela hataska. Mela barba bakoto, si barba bakoto. Mem me berda beketesso. I berda mako shebong safai ento pong salihe na beketa. Mem berda bakoto, si barba bakoto. Medie la bosa. Mam barba bakoto. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Si barba bong sebi ento poska. Amalaga ni brega des, si barba bakoto. Berda bekete kere bekete. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.